Luke chapter 24, Luke 24, verse number 27 says, and beginning at Moses, now that's the first five books in the Old Testament, right? And all the prophets, he, the Lord Jesus, expounded unto them in all the scriptures, and that's Old Testament scripture. It cannot be New Testament. New Testament's not written yet. And it says that he expounded unto them, unto these two Emmaus Road disciples, he expounded the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So Jesus Christ preached to these two after his resurrection. He preached Old Testament scripture about himself. The Son of God's found in the Old Testament. Right? So, I'm going to attempt a series on the Lord Jesus. Jesus in Genesis. I don't know whether we'll be chronological with it. But, I, where, where, where might we start to find the Son of God? In the Old Testament. Where would, where would you go to? How about Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, you say, well, I've got a question about that. It, it, I, I didn't read Jesus' name in there. All right, let me give you a couple of passages. The Bible says in the New Testament, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 16, it says, For by Him, the Lord Jesus Christ, were all things created. All things were created by Him and for Him, and by Him all things consist. So we're told there automatically, already, that He's the creator. And Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the, the heavens and the earth. Listen to me. Then that also tells me that Jesus is God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we're told in the New Testament that Jesus is the creator. He's titled in John chapter 1 as the Word with a capital W, right? In the beginning was the Word, capital W. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He created all things. Everything that was created was created by Him. And then we're told in the 14th verse of first chapter that the Word became flesh, became human, and dwelt among us. As the only begotten of the Father. So Jesus is the creator. I got three amens. I'm happy I've got three amens. So he is the creator. He's God. I would mention that some religious groups that they try to tell us that Jesus was the creator, but he was the first created being that he was God created that's not what Genesis 1 1 says it says in the beginning God who's already there before any creation created the heavens and the earth before time came in the beginning that's a time factor before time began before God began time God created time and everything else. So that tells me that Jesus is God and He's eternal God and He's creator. Are you still with me? 
God created. It is the Hebrew name. God is Elohim. It's plural. It comes from Eloah. It is plural form. Anytime you find him in the Old Testament, you're going to find out that it's a plural. Every time. It's a plural Hebrew. So what do we have? We have a problem. <laughs> we, we have God described as plural. Now that's not pantheism. That's not any of those kinds. Of, it's talking about what New Testament reveals to us as the Trinity. God is a triune God. There's only one God. Only one God. Only one God. That's clear revelation of Scripture. And yet, the Word of God says that, the, that God is three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Are we good? You say, well, I can't understand all of that. I, I don't get all that. How's... Uh, how does that work out? I, I just can't believe something I can't understand. Pe people say it all the time. I'm not going to believe something that I don't understand. Okay. Apply that standard to other things. N next time you pull out your smartphone. And you there's a reporter over in London, England. 5,000 miles away across the Atlantic Ocean and you are real timing somebody who is reporting on an event in London, England. Next time you do that and you see them in living color. It's not black and white any longer. Some of us remember black and white. It's living color. And he's talking real time. She's talking real time. You're seeing what's going on 5,000 miles away across the ocean. You then explain to me in detail about how it is that I can see that person in my hand. Somebody could go through all the specifics, the details about the satellite and, and all of that kind of business and maybe how the iPhone works or whatever they could do, all these kinds of things. Listen, but 99% of the people don't understand at all. I, I can remember when with TV you go, how in the world does that signal come and you can see somebody? Well, it's how... how I, 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 Call me, call me dumb, I, I, whatever you want to call. <laughs> but I don't understand how that works. Do you? Can you in detail explain it to me? But you know what? You're going to still use your iPhone, your smartphone. You're going to still look at it, and you're going to observe what's going on, and you're going to be able to see that fellow over there in London, England, and all of that kind of business. You don't just junk it. If, it use that excuse next time that... You, that Folks throw on God, use that same kind of reasoning and say, well, you know, I just can't understand it. I can't understand this complex God who's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and yet one God. I can't, I, I can't explain it either. All I know is the revelation of Holy Scripture to us about it. And this God is one, and yet there are three persons in the Godhead as New Testament reveals to us. All I'm going to do is believe it and participate in it. Just like you're going to go ahead and pick up your phone and partake and participate and go ahead. You're not taking the $500 iPhone and throwing it in a ditch or the trash can. And you don't even have to understand it. You just know it's so. It works. So it is with the Son of God. Most people don't believe simply because they, they don't want to be the creation of the Creator. They don't want to be the creation of the Creator who can tell you 
what to do and what not to do. It really is not a mind issue. It is a moral issue. People don't want supreme being, creator God, who we've already discovered is Jesus Christ the Lord. They don't want him telling them what they can do. You know, there's plenty of evidence for God. There's creation itself. It points to an intelligent designer. Why would we be so silly to take a pocket watch, Brother Kurt, and look it over? We'll open the back up and we'll see the gears running and, and all of the cycling, all the precision that is required to be able to get that little thing to go every little second and, and be the minute to be just right so that you can have time, precise timing, accurate timing. And you, why would we take that thing and say, oh, but chance, look what happened. Why, why would we take that thing and somehow say, you know, I think some primordial slime back there, somehow in some meteor in the energy, I don't know where the energy came from, but something happened and there's a big bang and all of a sudden, look at this thing keeping time like this. No, the evidence is that there is a watch maker. Right? An intelligent designer. And if you get one from Switzerland, it's, it's pretty good stuff. Some good jewels in there. So it is with God. You, you look at this world. Think about it. Creation itself verifies the fact or, or is evidence to the fact that there is a God creator. Conscience is evidence that there's a God. How come there is guilt in us? Somebody says, oh no, guilt is just a social construct. It's just something that society has built and put on us. And because they've put laws and rules and kinds of things, then we feel guilty. No, listen to me. The Bible is clear. We've got something in us called conscience. And it accuses or excuses Romans chapter 2. It will either say you're all right or you're not all right. It will affirm you or accuse you. Why? Because there's a creator who is a moral God. And he tells us what's right and what's wrong. And there's something in you that will bear witness to it. It's evidence that there's a God. There's the Word of God. The Bible's a miracle book. All of the prophecies full, foretold, fulfilled, all of predicted and accurately. Uh, we, we could just we came through Daniel. We already saw the prophecies that that have been fulfilled. And it's a, a miracle book. You say, well, you haven't think more than just some prophecies. We've got archaeology. There's not one bit of archaeology that's ever overturned the accuracy of Holy Scripture. And then, of course, the Son of God. His death, burial, and resurrection fulfilling the prophecies. His secular history even verifies it. So Jesus is God. He's the creator. He's in Genesis. Jesus is powerful. He's almighty. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, Jesus created everything. Barah. Used 50 times in our Old Testament. Never refers to man. Only refers to God. God created. God creates something out of nothing. Man can't do that. Can they? 
so, with scientist in, in, in the laboratory and he tells us about how that oh, I've been working on this for years and now I've created life. You didn't create life. All you did was take materials that were already in existence and found the formula and put them together. So that now, some, we've created something. No, no, you didn't create anything. You just made something. You mixed something. You took existing properties and put them together and found out what God's formula was. That doesn't make you a God. <laughs> Only God's God. Only God creates something out of nothing. And the fact of the matter, you want to know what kind of power he's got? Six 24-hour periods. He brought everything into existence. That's powerful. Out of nothing... Not long, prolonged ages. We got a problem if that's the case. Oh, we're going to make plant life here during this age. They try to say the 24-hour period's an age, you know. Maybe it's a, that might be hundreds of thousands of years or a million years. Well, what about, see, animal life. Then animals are made. Animal life after plant life. Well, listen, what if it's ages? They, they play off of each other, right? What, what, what the plant puts off, the animal must breathe oxygen. What the animal puts off, the plant must have for survival. Let's go ahead and just go a million years with that between them. Something's not going to exist. It's going to die. 624 our periods is the revelation of scripture about how God did it. Now that's powerful. God created the heavens and the earth in 24 hour period. He's a powerful God. Out of nothing. Think of the vastness of the universe. The earth, sun, moon, stars, galaxy, our galaxy, others. The complexity of everything. There's, there are around 300 billion cells, kids. 300 billion cells in your human body. And scientists tell us that each one of those cells are more complex than the entire structure system of New York City. Each cell. Complex. And God just took a little dust and breathed into him a breath of life on day six. Ha! That's him. Let me tell you who it is. It's Jesus Christ. He's a powerful God. He's the Almighty God. It's no wonder that in the New Testament we find that the Son of God overrides the law of gravity and walks on water. No big, didn't stress him a bit. Wasn't taxing on him a bit. No surprise that after he died at Calvary's cross, buried, rose the third day, that then after time with the disciples he ascended back into heaven he just started whoosh. he's God he can do it no wonder he spoke doesn't surprise me that he spoke to the winds and the waves and they became a calm peace be still and all of a sudden that storm just shut up as though the creator was talking to it he heals the diseased and the deformed the sight Gave sight to the blind. Delivered the demonic. 
fed 5,000 with a few loaves and a few fish, raised Lazarus from the dead after he'd been dead for four days. And then he raised himself after three. Shouldn't even surprise us. He's the creator. He is the creator. He is personal. I'm glad that we've got a God who is not distant. The deist, the old deist, you know, they used to tell us that he just, he, he created stuff and then he just let it go and it's just operating and he's hands off and all that kind of stuff. That's not my God. He's hands on everything that's going on. Everything. He's personal. He's not a force like the Star Wars. He's personal. He speaks ten times in Genesis chapter number one. We read those, those words. And he said, God said, God said. We always think of Exodus 20 and the Ten Commandments. This is the first Ten Commandments. <laughs> ten times. Genesis 1. God said. God said. You know what he said? God said. Stuff like, let there be light. He speaks. He saw. We're just talking about him being personal. Seven times we read that God saw. He saw that it was good. That is, he, he makes moral judgment about things. He has feelings. He approves of his creation. He has a moral standard of right and wrong. See? He has emotional makeup. You'll read the prayer of the upright or his delight. Well, God get, is delighted about something. The Son of God in the New Testament. He looks at, over Jerusalem and he wept, we're told. He knows of sadness. And the burden of people who don't know the Savior. People who are in rebellion against God. People are headed to a devil's hell. He has emotional makeup. He was moved with compassion. He so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He's personal. He's got mind, emotion, and will. Intellect. He has relationship and interaction with His created being and beings. Particularly humanity. What You know what we have? Genesis chapter number 3. He's walking in the garden and talking with Adam and Eve. Walking and talking, communicating, fellowshipping, asking them questions, giving them instruction. He's, he's not distant. I, I thank God... This morning, that that he that even whenever I want him to be distant, he's not distant. He'll interrupt your program. He'll barge right in and just start talking to you. You say, oh, "You mean audible?" No, clearer than that. A person comes, before you got saved, God came and spoke real to your heart about the need for you to get right. Amen. About your guilt and shame and sinfulness before Him. He came talking to you and somehow the gospel of Jesus Christ came across your path and you heard the good news that Jesus went to an old rugged cross and took care of it all. He took all of the punishment and judgment so that you could be forgiven of sins and saved by the marvelous grace of God and get right with God and have fellowship, restored fellowship with God. And go to heaven after you die.
He's a God of purpose and plan. He's all-knowing. He foreknows. He foreordains. He talks about His eternal purposes. He does whatever His counsel determines before to be done. All those kind of little phrases are found in Scripture. But He created for, our, for several reasons. Listen to this passage, Romans, or excuse me, Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. The Lord created you for Him. You say, well, why am I here? I'll tell you why you're here. You're just wasting your life. You're wasting your time. You're wasting... You're here for Him. God put you here to know Him and then come under His authority and serve Him. He, he created you that you might tell of Him. Because others need to hear. Just like you needed to hear. He created you to worship Him. We're here not to ungratefully just suck His oxygen, you take breath and heart beating again because God's let us have another breath of life. God uh, functioning and, and all and God providing good to us, tending to us all of these kinds of things and then to go on ungratefully and unthankfully and selfishly in life doing whatever I want to do instead of what God created me to be and do. God created me. We, we read in Colossians 1 there. That you are created for Him. By Him and for Him. For Jesus Christ. That's why you're here. There are people running all over the world and got all kinds of plans. But they don't have, not interested in God's plan. God's plan. The Creator God created you for Him. For His pleasure. For His praise. For His purposes. For His plan, you're created. L let me close. Fella could preach in Genesis 1 forever, couldn't he? Funny, I got a lot of amens right there. <laughs> Almost suggesting something. Like, would you please cut this off? A series, preacher. A series. A series. <laughs> Brother, Brother Hall knows that I try to get her all in one shot. We're only going to look at the Creator one time. He's in Genesis 1. No surprise that the gospel is displayed in Genesis 1. No surprise. It's pictured in the first creative work here. You say, well, how could it be created? The gospel did not really happened yet. But we need to remember, He, Jesus, is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This is all in the pre-plan of God. God even... You say, was sin in God's plan? Well, of course it was. Is He responsible? No. Second causes. He's first cause, but second causes are responsible. But He already foreordained and foreknew, and what's He do? He's going to display Himself. We would never know how, how mammoth is His mercy to sinners unless He did it this way. And He did just so that His mercy would be on display in such a way. Oh, it'd be one thing. It'd be one thing to, to love somebody that was perfect. 
An angel who was perfect, let's say, who was sinless, who didn't even offend, offend him. I mean, that, that's just natural, right? But what about a high-handed rebel put the fist in the face and said, I'm not having anything to do with you. I'll make my own decisions and listen to me. I'll take of that tree. I'll take of that tree if I want to take of that tree, Eve says. You just back off. I'm my own boss. But you'd never how see how deep God's mercy goes. If he didn't already for the foundation of the world. Son of God's going to Calvary because sin's going to enter it all. And I'm going to let sin enter so that the gloriousness of my grace might be put on display. Ephesians 1. I'm going to let people see. I'm going to let people know. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Not the impeccable, there aren't any. Not the sinless, there aren't any. But he died for the ungodly. So they could be forgiven. Oh, now I'm seeing how God, big God's mercy is. It's bigger than what, what you might even have thought. You know how a parent is? A parent will take a child, and a child that does well, man, you're just proud of them, you slap them on the back, you're just happy and you're thrilled with them, and the child that's in rebellion, you just, you just want to slap them. You know, that, that's how it works. But you know what? That's natural. But God has something that's beyond even natural. It is heavenly, and you see the mercy of God like you would never see the mercy of God. God forgive sinners who come in genuine repentance and confession of sin to the Savior. How much does He love me? And you? He died for us. That's big love. Look at Genesis chapter number 1. This first creator can make a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Right? The Lord can make us new creatures. Well, it's depicted in this first creation. Genesis verse 1 and 2, The world is born into darkness and deadness. It says there, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's the condition, a picture, the chaotic condition of uh, the unsaved heart. Darkness. Emptiness. And then what happens? Verse 2 goes on to say, And the Spirit of God moved. There you are in your deadness and darkness and chaotic condition. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God began to move. And started, the very word moved has the idea of energy. All of a sudden, energetically starts doing something to create something. He's, he's fixing to create a creation. He's about to make something. And then he speaks. God speaks. Here's the Lord Jesus, pre-incarnate. Look what it says, verse 3. And God, you can put Jesus in there. And Jesus said, He comes speaking. Isn't that how it works? 
You and your chaotic condition, darkness and deadness and all, there's no life on the planet yet. See verse 2. And then the Spirit of God comes and starts stirring your heart, producing conviction, working, and then the next thing you know, He speaks. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. Romans 10, 17. He speaks. Word from God comes to you. And then what's He do? He creates something. And what's He create? What He creates has light and life. Verse number three said, God said, see it's pictured in this first creation, the new creation. The birth of this planet is a picture of the new birth. It says, and God said, let there be light and there was light. Look at verse number 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. Light and life comes to this which he creates. All right. I'm done. I'm promised. Second Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 4 through 6. New Testament passage that brings us back to this passage. In Genesis 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Listen. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Right? We've got to tell the gospel because people are lost in a lost condition. And it says there, In whom the God, small g, the devil, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. Blinded their minds. Darkness. Lest the light of the gospel... Uh, of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them for we preach not ourselves verse 6 for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness the Genesis 1 God we've already identified him as the Lord Jesus hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What's he do? He gives us light comes. The light turns on. Well, I get it. I am a sinner. Jesus is the only Savior. I get it. He did die for me. Arose the third day, ascended back to heaven. And has promised to come again one of these days. He will forgive. Just like He promised. If I but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll be saved. If I call on Him, I'll be saved. And then He gives me life. Ephesians 2, 1, And you hath He quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin. He quickens you. you can, can you explain it? No, all I know is that that night, on my knees, Lions Park, Whitehall, Illinois, in the grass, outdoor crusade, Sam Jones preaching the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I knelt at that bench in the grass that Saturday evening, and I called on the Son of God, not even knowing what I need to know, probably hardly, but that night, new life and new light came in me 40 years ago. And who did it? The Creator. Yeah. Yeah. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, made me a new creature. Yeah. Do you know anything about this Creator God who's powerful, yeah. personal, he wants, wants real relationship with us. Not just religion. A relationship. Let's stand. Linda Paul is playing.
He's got a purpose for your life. He created you for a purpose. He's got power to pardon you, to change you. Jesus in Genesis, the Creator. Wastefulness is replaced with usefulness. Emptiness is replaced with fullness. Darkness is replaced with light. When you come to the Son of God, when you call on the Lord Jesus Christ, You want somebody to pray with you? Make your way in this altar and take me by the hand. Someone else, take somebody by the hand. You want some scripture, more scripture. God's great promise you can rely on. Get your eternity settled. Find real relationship with the true and living God. about your heart this morning have you ever met him our gospel came not in word only but in power and in the Holy Ghost much assurance I'm glad he'll assure your heart. These things have been written that you may know that you have eternal life. First John chapter 5 tells us. We can know it. You can know with assurance this morning. attention. Dr. Mike Bagwell will be with us uh, October 11th, Sunday morning through Wednesday night. So you pray about that meeting if you would, please. He, we're going to have a meeting. We thought about not having, and uh, we've decided to go ahead. And, and so you, you pray about the meeting, all right? Larry Cowick dismisses, please. <laughs>